What's going on guys, Josh Pogok here, and in today's video, Anthropic just released some crazy new models and features. We got Claude Sonnet 3.5, the new and improved version. We got Claude Sonnet 3.5 Haiku, and we even got the new computer use AI agent where you can use the API and Claude can control your computer. It will take screenshots and make actions on your behalf to get things done. We're going to go over some of the new model benchmarks and I'm even going to show you how you can try out the new computer use feature in a virtual environment so you can test out this new AI agent capability yourself. Let's dive right into it. All right, guys, so the main announcements, like I said, is the new version of Claude Sonnet 3.5, the new and improved version, and then we got Claude Sonnet 3.5 Haiku. So Claude Sonnet 3.5 delivers across the board improvements over its predecessor with particularly significant gains in coding, an area where it already led the field. So this is really, really cool. Uh, I'm very excited to try this out more, and I will be doing more tests with these new models in some of the future videos, so make sure to stay tuned for that. So 3.5 Haiku matches the performance of Claude 3 Opus, their previous largest model, on many evaluations for the same cost and similar speed to the previous generation of Haiku. This is great because it means better models, cheaper cost, and then they say we're also introducing a new groundbreaking capability in public beta, computer use. And I'm extremely excited for this because as you know on this channel, we do a lot of different videos on different AI agent tools, control controlling your computer, doing web searches. And now we have one of the biggest frontier model companies who is actually releasing these type of features. So it is currently available on the API today. So now you can direct Claude to use your computer the way people do by looking at a screen, moving a cursor, clicking a button and typing text. Claude Sonnet 3.5 is the first frontier AI model to offer computer use in public beta. So it's still experimental at times cumbersome and error prone. So this is quite interesting. Asana, Canva, Cognition, DoorDash, Replit, and the browser company have already begun to explore these possibilities, carrying out tasks that require dozens and sometimes even hundreds of steps to complete. For example, Replit is using Claude Sonnet 3.5 capabilities with computer use and UI navigation to develop a key feature that evaluates apps as they're being built for the Replit AI agent project. That's really interesting because we can see that these companies are already using similar things like these. And this is the public beta that's being released to us. Like I can only imagine what's going on behind the scenes at some of these bigger companies and how they're going to be using these models and how powerful that, you know, these agents are because they're essentially team members and you can build things so quickly. So I'm extremely excited to see this start rolling out more and more. Now I'll leave links down below to the Claude official computer use videos right here where they show different tasks like automating operations. And there's like two or three different videos. So you can see in this example, please fill out the vendor request for Ant Equipment Co. using data from their vendor spreadsheet or search portal tabs in window one. List and verify each field as you complete the form in window two. And you can see that the tool is screenshotting things, taking it step by step, left clicking, moving the mouse, screenshotting. All right. As you can see, it's actually doing those actions on the right hand side and it's filling in the form successfully and submitted it. All right. So like I said, these videos will be linked down below. All right. So here's the benchmarks that they have. And as you can see, Claude Sonnet 3.5, the new version is pretty damn impressive. It beats out the old Claude Sonnet 3.5 in every single category, pretty much. And the 3.5 high Q, like I said before, is now pretty much where the old Opus was. And I'll leave a link down below to this blog post where you can read more about the Claude Sonnet 3.5 update and the different benchmark tests as well as Haiku and then also too about teaching Claude to navigate computers responsibly you know on OS world and talking about the different benchmarks that they did for now let's actually dive into setting this up are you tired of pouring thousands of dollars into appointment setters only to watch leads slip away imagine having a team of elite sales agents booking qualified appointments for you around the clock no more wasted time on training, no more frustration with performance, and no more draining your budget on inconsistent and expensive call centers. Introducing Stride Agents, AI-powered appointment centers that work 24-7, 
never get tired, and book appointments while you sleep. Trained on thousands of successful conversations, our AI agents outperform human teams at just one-tenth of the cost. Join the ranks of businesses that doubled their appointments and booking rates in just a matter of weeks. Don't get left behind in the AI revolution. Visit strideagents.com now and transform your entire sales process with cutting-edge AI technology. It's time to accelerate your stride with AI agents. Okay, so if we check out the API docs right here, you can see a section which is called computer use data and i'm not going to read through this entire thing and i'll leave it down below but you can see claude sonnet 3.5 the updated model is capable of interacting with tools that can manipulate a computer desktop environment we'll definitely test this out more too in future videos and setting it up with different ai agents with different tools and doing some more customizations so if you want to do that now i would suggest reading through these docs more in depth but for now we can see that they actually provide us a computer use reference implementation right here so if we click on this it's going to take us to the anthropic quick starts github repo right here and you can see we're in computer use right here so you can definitely read through some of this but it's pretty simple to get up and running so you can export your anthropic api key to your environment so you can simply just run this command right here of course you're going to want to replace this with your api key okay so this is how you would set your anthropic environment variable if you're on mac or linux now if you're on windows you're going to do it a little bit differently you can actually just run this command right here and i'll leave it down below in the description if you are on windows and same thing for getting this set up first things first you're going to need docker installed so make sure you have docker go to docker.com set that up because this is going to be running in a containerized environment and then you're simply just going to run this right here in your command line and this is this is specifically for mac or linux if you're on windows you're going to want to run this right here and like i said i'll leave both of these the windows version in the description okay so the windows version will be in the description and then if you're on mac or linux you can simply just follow this version okay you can see here once i ran this command it basically started computer use on localhost 8080. Now there are additional options if you want to use Bedrock or use Vertex, you can do so and you can definitely change some of these too with the screen size for the different variables as well as here's the development version. But we're just going to keep it simple and use the Anthropic API quick start right here. All right, so this is what it's going to look like once you actually load up the app. As you can see here, we got a virtual environment right here using no vnc and then on the left hand side we have claude's computer use demo chat right here all right so we have two different views here we have the chat view and then the http exchange logs view and once we actually start running some commands you'll be able to see both these populate. Now let's go ahead with our first one. All right, so our first prompt is search for Josh Pocock on YouTube and let me know how long his last YouTube video was, how many views it has, and how many subscribers he has. All right, so we can see the agent is running now and we can see that it is going. So every time it does a little action like that, it makes that kind of noise. We can see the tool use here, computer, input, action, screenshot, same thing here, mouse is moving, coordinate, and by default, toggle screen screen control is off which is kind of nice when the AI agent is doing things so you don't mess it up but if you did want to actually move things around on the screen you can simply toggle that on All right so as you can see it's going through different screenshots it just opened up Firefox and now it's searching YouTube right here all right so we can see it searched up Josh Pocock right here all right so it just found my YouTube channel Josh Pocock okay so we got the results so looking at the search results I can see Josh Pocock's YouTube channel he has 9.22k subscribers subscribers thank you for that by the way guys and his latest video titled free by data ai agent was uploaded nine hours ago with 1.4k views and is 16 minutes and four seconds long to summarize boom 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 okay so it got that correct all right so it took 15 different requests right here and we can go to http exchange logs to see all those if you click on this it will show you all the details between each request all right so we can see the max tokens the message right here the system prompt the model all the different stuff the tools we're using all right next prompt we'll try is create a text file named pong.py on the desktop and fill it with some code on a pong game in python then open the terminal and run it to play pong all right so a little bit more complex let's see how it does 
Oh my gosh. Okay, so I don't know. Okay, so I thought it reached an error here. So it was uh, reaching a couple different errors here. I thought it was, I didn't think it worked. And I guess it figured out a way to get around those errors itself. I don't even know exactly what it did. Um, okay, so great. Now we have Python and the required dependencies installed. And now let's run the Python game. And then it just ran it. And as you can see there, it was just playing it. Okay, so that's pretty cool that it actually created a Pong game and got it all set up and ran it um, all by itself. Now let's try go to executivestride.com forward slash apply and book a call for tomorrow at 4 p.m. using dummy data. Just fill in the form with whatever and answer the questions to book the call. All right, so let's go ahead and run this now trying uh, filling out a form. All right, now I will say this is a bit slow, but this is pretty expected. One, it's in beta, and two, we're using a virtual environment in our browser right here, so I wouldn't expect this to be lightning fast. Okay, it looks like we got an issue right here, an error message, so... Okay, so I just went ahead and refreshed it. So if it does glitch out ever, just refresh the page. And as you can see, now it is running correctly. Okay, so it entered in the website right here. Now it's going to need to scroll down. Okay, so it just messed up there. All right, so it kind of messed up. If it does do the action before it takes the screenshot sometimes, then it could kind of like get lagged behind and then make the wrong move. But it's going to end up ultimately... Oh, no, see, now it's saying this. Okay, so it's... What it should be doing right now is scrolling down. Seems like it's having a bit of an issue with that. Wow. Okay, so now it just looks like it got the HTML content right here. It's trying to find the calendar. Calendar is right here. You just have to scroll. Okay, so it basically said it couldn't do it. Um, website might be using advanced JS that's not loading properly in Firefox. So yeah, no, it's incorrect here. It simply just couldn't scroll down. So I'm just going to, I personally scroll down for it. Now let's see if it can, I'm just gonna say book a call and see if it can book a call here. All right, so I'm just gonna say book a call on the calendar for the 23rd at 6 p.m. and just fill in dummy data. So let's see if it can do this. So I personally scroll down for it to see the calendar here. So shouldn't be any excuse. Oh. Never mind, it just reloaded. Okay, it looks like it can see the calendar this time, and it's clicking on the 6 p.m. one. Now it looks like it closed Firefox. Okay, so it's just been frozen here, so I'm going to refresh it and try again. All right, so I ran the prompt one more time. Let's see if it can actually get it this time. Okay, so I clicked on the 6 p.m. Now it should click on select. And by the way, guys, if you do want to book a call with our team, this is how you do it. I'll leave a link down below. So if you need help growing your business, then check this out. Okay, so it filled in John. Now this is the issue. I think it has an issue scrolling. Oh, it just scrolled. Oh, so maybe it's clicking enter or maybe it scrolled. I don't know. So I'll put John Smith. There's quite a bit of data in this form though. Okay, yeah. so I did scroll. Okay, that's good. No. Oh, it just changed the first name to an email and changed the last name to a company. And, okay, so it's filling it in incorrectly. Put the phone number in the job title position, which is wrong. Okay, I put business. Okay, it's completely messing up right now. It, no, it, now it's trying to click schedule event when it has complete wrong inaccurate information. Okay, I don't know what's going on. And okay, this clicking is really starting to drive me crazy. So I'm think I'm going to just say this is a fail, epic fail. I mean, you could probably get this to work, but I think we just with, I mean, it's very slow. Yeah, no, this is not going to work. Okay, well, other than that, guys, I think it's pretty cool. I think, uh, you know, the test demo that they provide, like I said, it is slow, is not the best to use, but it, this is really just the start. It's going to quickly pick up. I can assure you of that. And, uh, you know, I'll be doing more videos surrounding this, maybe using it in different agents. But like I said, you can go ahead, test the demo right now. Try some different use cases. Let me know in the comments down below what you got this to do, as well as what you think of this tool from Anthropic. This is pretty crazy, along with those two new models. You know, it's really difficult to say who is leading the AI race right now between OpenAI, Anthropic. We have other companies too. We have Google, this, that, whatever. But we've seen some really cool releases recently from OpenAI. Now we're seeing some from Anthropic. And this is just really the beginning. You know, imagine a couple months down the line when this is a lot. A lot more advanced a lot more flushed out faster and imagine incorporating this with something like a real-time api or whatever the case may be maybe anthropic has their own version or whatever and you just interact with your computer or your agent by simply talking to it and then it completely controls your computer 
Maybe it completely controls your work or your development process or, you know, running your company and maybe you have a team of agents and they're doing all these different tasks and you're just orchestrating them or you have a manager that's orchestrating them, an AI manager. So a lot of cool stuff in the future. Um, definitely excited to see. And I think this is just a stepping stone, but let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Other than that, guys, if you're new here, we upload videos every single day on AI, automation, business growth. So if you're new to the channel and you got some value here, then make sure to like this video, leave a comment down below and smash that subscribe button to stay up to date with the daily uploads. You know, tools like Agent Q and Agent E are definitely more optimal for browsing the web at this moment. But like I said, this is still the start. And I definitely think that we will see some pretty cool advantages advancements with this very soon and also guys if you haven't already joined our free community stridecommunity.com i'll leave a link down below our free facebook group and discord channel also too guys if you run a business and you need help optimizing your systems booking more leads running paid ads we're integrating ai agents such as ai cold callers ai appointment setters into your business and book a call down below executivestride.com forward slash apply and we can see if it's a good fit or not other than that guys i will see you in tomorrow's video keep hustling keep grinding and of course guys accelerate your stride take care